Let's love the Lord together today. Let your hand clap. Show your praise for the Lord, your hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Oh, praise God for saving me. What a wonderful uh, time we've had here with this church, getting to know your pastor and wife a little better, up close and personal, some meals and fellowship. And we just had a nice full schedule since Friday night and yesterday and now today. And we've just been thrilled and honored to be here, both my wife and I, and uh, get to know you. And it uh, feels good. I feel like uh, you can go to heaven from here. And uh, you've got a nice safe place from the best I can tell from getting to know your pastor and his wife and family and the leaders of this church, uh, you're in safe hands. Uh, it seems like they have a good, strong uh, love for the Lord, for his word, a strong, uh, solid doctrine, uh, a good moral lifestyle. And thank the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. And they can lead us and guide us in the ways of truth and we can grow in the Lord. And uh, we just had a good time here Friday night. Yesterday, uh, I sat with the men for a little while. My wife talked to the ladies. We have some good fellowship. And uh, we just appreciate all your hospitality and kindness and a uh, wonderful room, enough snacks to last the rest of the week, enough medicine to get me through the apocalypse. I kind of arrived a little bit under the weather getting over some uh, chest cold, but uh, feeling better and thanking the Lord for it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So thank you for everything, Pastor, and this wonderful church. Amen. And uh, now I have a, uh, the text will be coming from 2 Kings 4, 1 through 6, but I want to introduce you to the text by way of a video. Uh, so if you want to be seated, God bless you. I know this is a little unusual, a little different, but I think the video just uh, <coughs> examples and displays the text in such a, <coughs> such a better and profound way. Are we going to be about ready? All right, if you can play it, play it. If not, I'll read the text and then play it. You need a minute? There we go. It does have some audio to it. It's about four minutes long, the, the video.
Oh, let's rejoice in the Lord. Isn't that a beautiful illustration? Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm drawing the message today out of the last part of the text where he said, bring me yet a vessel. He said, there's not a vessel more. And then the oil stayed. My message today, I feel like the Lord put it in my heart and spoke it to me. Bring me an empty vessel, saith the Lord. Lord, we ask you to bless the ministry of your word. Bless the wonderful people of God. Bless this church and its continued growth and reaching this community and being a blessing to this community. Lord, I ask you to bless the new sanctuary that they're remodeling and building right now and getting ready, Lord, for the future. I ask you to bless the growth of this church, Lord, and bless them to reach their family and their loved ones. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> this is one of the marvelous and notable stories of the Bible Providing an extraordinary example of God's miraculous provision. It wasn't just provision, it was a miraculous provision. The woman declares, the, the creditor has come. In other words, it's like that old rhyme, I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. She owed. Uh, her husband had died. There was no way to bring income into the home the money had to be paid, and they were going to take her sons to work off the debt. It seems that there are times in life when life takes its toll, uh, demands its payment. Superstition calls it karma. The Bible principle is the law of sowing and reaping. Somewhere, some point, sometime, you're going to have to pay up. You're going to pay for what you said. You're going to pay the price for what you did, or possibly not you, but someone you love that you're connected to, you end up paying the price for what they said or what they did. The point is there comes times in life when the due date has arrived and you have something you have to give, and in her case, she was unable to provide it. The point is she was in trouble, in desperate need of help. Did not know what to do, but she did know where to go. Amen. Sometimes you don't know what to do, but you do know where to go. In this case, she went to the prophet of God. I think that speaks volumes to you and I. When you don't know what to do, remember where to go. Come to the house of the Lord. Come to the word of the Lord. Come sing one of these songs. Come pray a prayer. Come hear the word preached and see if there's something in there somewhere that has an answer for where I am and what I need. <clears throat> the interesting part of the story is she goes to the prophet, she presents her dire situation, and he looks at her and asks this incredible question. What do you have in your house? In other words, he's looking for something that he can use on her behalf. <clears throat> what do you have that we can work with? What do you have that we can start with? You've explained the problem and what you don't have, but he's looking for what you do have that can become the source of your miracle. What do you know? What do, what do you have possession of? What is in your home? What do you have in your house? I'm asking you that today. What do you have in your house? What do you have that might be used as the beginning point of the miraculous in your life? Right. Is there a Bible verse you know you can call on? <clears throat> Thank God that many of us have gone to Sunday school and we were taught by Sunday school teachers. I, one of my precious Sunday school teachers, I got to spend some time with her a while back. She's laid up in her 90s now. But uh, a, a Sunday school teacher that taught us the stories to put the Bible verses in our heart. Because according to the scripture, his word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our pathway. So when you get in the darkness, when you get in the valley, when you get in trouble, when you don't know what to do, if a verse that you have in your heart, you need to have a favorite verse. You need, to, you need to try to memorize some of those from the book of Psalms. You need to get something in your spirit. You may forget about it for weeks or months at a time, but when the time is just right, that verse is going to come back to your mind, and it's going to be a lamp and a light to your pathway just when you need it the most. 
It's one of the reasons I think it's so important that we train up our children because they may depart from the faith. They may not always walk with the Lord, but they'll always have the knowledge. And when they don't know what to do, they will know where to go. <clears throat> they will know that the word of the Lord can be bread to them when they're hungry. Amen. You have a Bible verse that you can call on. And if you don't have any, then I'm encouraging you, get your Bible down, dust it off, open it up, read some Proverbs, read some Psalms, read some of the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John about the life of Jesus. See His mercy and His grace on display and allow that to become part of your thinking and something in your spirit because there's going to come a moment you're going to need to fall back on something. What do you have in your house? Any songs that you can sing? You know, the Bible teaches us that the joy of the Lord is your strength. You got to get a song in your heart. It's a, maybe it's just an old song like Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Somewhere you're going to need to remember that his blood reaches to the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. Sometime you're going to have to remember that underneath are the everlasting arms and that he'll bring you out of the miry clay and set your feet on a rock to stay. Get a song in your heart. Get something in your spirit. Do you know any songs? Is there anything that you have memorized in your spirit that just stays with you and when the night gets dark and the way gets rough and you don't know what to do you can just start singing one of them good old songs of the Lord or put it on your radio or on your iPad and play that good music and let it minister to your heart songs are for the night and if you can sing your way through the night joy cometh in the morning if sometimes you just have to sing until victory gets here just sing until the answer shows up you gotta have do you have a song in your heart you can sing unto the lord my mother used to sing the answers on the way this i know jesus said it i believe it and it's so our heavenly father knows our needs before we pray and you can rest assured the answer's on the way the answer's on the way this i know sometimes you just got to know it deep down inside and know it enough to sing about it get a song in your heart get something in your spirit if you know how to read the bible if you know how to sing a song do you have any faith do you have any faith? Do you, do you believe anything? Do you, do you believe there is a God? The Bible said he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You may not know much about him, but if you believe there is a God, we can start with that. If you say, I know he's out there somewhere, but I don't know what to do about it, we can start with that. I remember my prayer when I was out there in the world doing all the stuff I was doing late one night by myself. I got down beside the sofa in that little efficiency apartment, not even as big as this little area right here, and I looked up in the darkness and I said, if you're out there and if you can hear me I need help I knew he was listening deep down in my heart I believed there was a God I was very confused and very disoriented but I had just a little something to work with and that was that I believed there was a God and I could call out and just he just might hear me and he just might help me if you have faith the grain of a mustard seed you don't need a whole lot just use what you've got just a mustard seed is all you need that little faith can move a great mountain that little faith in God that little trust in him you know I find people from all walks of life all kinds of religions all kinds of backgrounds and life experiences but there's a common denominator among us today we're here because we believe there is a God why should I live my life as though there is no God? There's no God to hear me when I pray. There's no God to see me or hear me when I worship. I remember one time we were going through a very hard time in our life. We were really struggling through the battle and the persecution problems. And I noticed my wife sitting over there on the end of the sofa by the end table. She had her Bible open in her lap. But I'd been watching this for a little while, been 30, 40 minutes and she wasn't reading it or anything. She's just sitting there with the Bible open like this young lady right here. Just, she's sitting just like that, had her Bible open, just been that way a long time. And finally, I told her, I said, baby, if you're not going to read the Bible, why don't you just lay it there on the end table and just have it close? She said, we need God on our side, and I want him to see me here with this Bible open. And I thought, well, that's quaint, but, you know, he, he knows if you're reading or not. You know, you can't. Can't fake him out. 
<coughs> but the more I thought about it, the more I realized the wisdom of it. Sitting there with that Bible open in the middle of those troubles we were going through. We're just letting the Lord know. I may not know what the answer is, but I know it's in here somewhere. I, I don't know what to do, but I know it's in here somewhere. I, I don't have direction right now, but I know there's a lamp and a light here. And I'm just going to sit here holding what I know. My answer's here somewhere. Sometimes it's that way when you're singing. I know it's here somewhere. Amen. Do you know how to pray? If you can pray a prayer at all, you may not be eloquent. You may not be able to pray a long time. You know, sometimes people in the middle of a car wreck, all they can do is yell out, Jesus. But it's a prayer that makes a difference. You can pray even a little bit if you know how to just close your eyes and say, Jesus, 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 I need your help. I need your strength. I need you to touch me. I need you to hear me when I pray. <clears throat> you know, that's something David said one time. He said, oh, Lord, hear my prayer. Now, you know you're in trouble when you got to pray over your praying. <laughs> you got to pray before you pray. Uh, when I was pastoring there in Lynchburg, I... We was reaching some people out of various uh, different religions, Middle Eastern religions. We had one of those fellas, <laughs> old Muhammad Jacoby, and he was coming in and starting to learn the way. And I heard him out there in the sanctuary one day, and he was walking around in circles. And he was walking around going like this. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. I want to pray. Oh, Jesus, I will pray. I will pray. I want to pray. I'm going to pray. I want to pray. And I'm in the office, and after a while, I couldn't take it. I'm thinking, well, pray, man. <laughs> Get on with it. You know. <clears throat> I got up from my desk and was going to go out there and talk to him and tell him, just start praying. But when I got up to go out there, the spirit checked me, said, leave him alone. If you were fighting the spiritual and mental battle he was fighting, you might have to take a little while to talk yourself into praying before you prayed yourself. Amen. If you got to talk yourself into pray, talk yourself into praying. If you got to pray over your prayer, pray over your prayer. But if you know how to pray at all, pray whatever prayer you know to pray. It'll make a difference. The weakest prayer is stronger than the strongest devil. The weakest faith is stronger than the strongest devil. I remember one time when I was pastoring here in Lynchburg, we had a, a couple in the church, Alvin and Charlie Rucker and uh, he had become one of the leaders in our church, and I taught him a lot about prayer and prayer meetings, and he got hurt on the job, cut his hand, uh, construction nearly cut it off, it was very serious, rushed him to the hospital, uh, phones and things, were, cell phones were not as fluid and, as they are now, they were trying to get in touch with me and couldn't get in touch with me, and, and uh, this very serious emergency was unfolding, hours went by before I found out about it. The next day at church, back in those days, we had uh, testimony service. Now, uh, this is one of the most dangerous things the church ever did in its history. We just over. Anybody want to say anything for the Lord? <laughs> Let me tell you something. We learned that's not going to work. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And uh, <laughs> we always had this special prayer over whoever was going to lead testimony service because we didn't know what battle they were going to have to fight or what was going to be said. And it came testimony service, and here his sister stood up, and she said, you know, and her husband was sitting there, hand all wrapped up and bandaged up. She said, had this serious emergency yesterday, nearly cut his hand off, and we were trying to get in touch with Pastor, but he wasn't answering his phone, and I'm sitting there thinking, here we go. It's all my fault. It always is, you know. You never get the credit, but you'll definitely get the blame. And I'm thinking, we're going to hear about how bad of a pastor I am here in testimony service. She's going along saying we're trying to call and trying to call and couldn't get a hold of Pastor. We wanted him to come to the hospital and pray over Alvin. And she's just going through all this. And I'm thinking, Lord, let it in, let it in. And then right in the middle of that testimony, tears begin to flow. She began to say, you know, Pastor, we couldn't get in touch with you. We wanted you to come pray. She said, but right there in that hospital room, we looked at each other and said, we know what to do. Our pastors taught us how to pray. Why don't we just do what he's taught us to do? And said, Pastor, we begin to pray right there. And the power of God came in on us. She said, thank you for teaching us to pray. 
Thank you that we were in an hour of a great need. We knew how to touch God. We knew what to do. We knew who to call. You may not know anything else in life, but you find yourself in a difficult emergency crisis situation. Pull your car off the side of the road. Lean your head up on that steering wheel and call his name Jesus. Jesus. I know you're out there. I know your mercy is great. I know your grace is free. I know you died for my sins. I know you'll make a way. Come on. Do you know anything at all about God that could possibly be used in your circumstance? What do you have in your house? What do you have in your house? Clap your hands and magnify the Lord. Praise God. Can you remember any sermons? You know, now, back in the, my day, we had cassette tapes, and then we went to CDs, and now I guess everything's just online streaming. But watch them. Listen to them again and again. Get something that mattered to you or had a meaning to you at a certain point in life. Memorize that sermon title. Memorize that text. Get it in your spirit. Because one of these days you're going to need it to preach to you all over. You may not have needed it as much that day. But the Lord was delivering it to you for safekeeping. Because the day would come. You have any prophecies? Any miracles? Any blessings? I think I told the story here somewhere. Did I tell you all the story about the expired prophecy? Well, we had a prophecy in 2019. Uh, our vehicles were getting old. And this lady prophesied to my wife and I, mainly to her. God, by the end of the year, the Lord's going to give you a vehicle. Well, the end of the year came, and that was, I think, in October. I was really excited in November, December. But when November, December 31st came and nothing showed up, we thought, well, okay. I'm not going to get technical. I'll, leave, I'll wait till into January. <laughs> Maybe a little delay here somewhere. We waited all of January. Nothing happened. All of February, nothing happened. My, my, my faith was waning by February. We got into March and April, and I gave up on it. I was done with that. Well, that, I'm sure she meant well. That just didn't happen. I, we got all the way up into the month of August. I come home from a meeting. You know, my wife's home praying all the time, seeing angels and stuff. <laughs> she said, we need to sow into that prophecy. I said, what prophecy? She said, I've been praying. The Lord's been speaking to me. We need to sow into that prophecy. I said, what prophecy? She said, we received a prophecy about a vehicle. I said, that prophecy is expired. <laughs> it expired back at the end of December. That just didn't happen. I mean, it is what it is. You know, you got to live in a real world here. You know, it just didn't happen. She said, well, the Lord said we're supposed to sow into it. And I said, well, what do you got in mind? And there was this family in the church didn't have a vehicle at all. We, ours were old, but we had two. So we applied that principle, you know, if you have two and they got none. So I checked with the bishop, and he said it'd be all right. And so we sold that vehicle and gave them one of our vehicles, and they drove off in it. And I said, you know, this prophecy's not working. <laughs> First, it didn't come to pass, and now we're one down. We're supposed to have one up, and said we've gone the other direction. Amen. Amen. Well, by the end of that year, about the end of December, I got a call from a pastor up in Michigan. He said, I want you to come preach for me. Can you preach for me the last Sunday of the year? I think it was the 31st. And I said, yes. And he said, I need to ask you a strange thing. Would you just buy a one-way ticket? I said, well, yes. He said, just trust me. You'll, you'll be fine. Well, I had been there before, and there had been some talk about going on a cruise or something. So I thought, you know what? They're going to take us on a cruise, baby. We're going on a cruise. This is going to be awesome. Amen. We fly up to Michigan. We do that service. At the end of the service, they bring my wife on the platform, and they're putting it up on the screen, and I don't see real well. I'm squinting trying to see, and there's this beautiful white 2019 Lexus 4X, uh, GX 460, the big Le Well, we got it out here in the driveway if you want to the end of the story. Um, I'm looking at that, and I said, is that, what, what, is that a Lexus? And the pastor said, it is. I said, is that for me? He said, it is. And uh, this family in the church that owned a, co a paving company, uh, God put it on that man's heart to sell this vehicle that he had bought for his daughter in December of the previous year. And then she was pregnant and had a very serious pregnancy and had to go on bed rest. And so she spent all year in bed rest, and they just had the vehicle just parked. And in the month of August, it got in a hailstorm. And so he decided he was going to just collect the insurance money from the hail damage and put it off at auction. 
But when he tried to auction it, he couldn't. He got all confused and was got foggy. Couldn't figure out how to fill the paperwork out. And so he leaned back in his chair and said, Lord, help me. What's going on? And the Lord said, don't auction it off. My wife loves this part. Give it to Sister Kleindance because she needs a vehicle to take Brother Kleindance back and forth to the airport. Amen. So we drove out of there in a 2019 Lexus GX 460 all the way home on the strength of an expired prophecy. Come on, if you got something in your heart, <laughs> get it out and dust it off. There might still be a little life in there somewhere. Don't, don't get caught up on the technicalities. If the essence of it all, God's going to bless me. I believe God was expressing his desire and he'll make a way somewhere. I thought it was kind of poetic justice that we received that vehicle on the very last day of the next year. And he had brought, bought it before the end of the first year. It looked like it wasn't fulfilled at all. Now it looks like it was fulfilled twice. Amen. I've stopped trying to figure out God. I'm just trying to believe God. You have any prophetic words that have been spoken into your life? If you have any prayers that's been prayed over you, if there's been any blessings that's been spoken your way, if you've ever received a miracle or you've ever seen somebody else receive a miracle, hey, if you don't have your own stories, tell somebody else's stories till you get them. Amen. Tell what you've heard. Tell what you've seen. Tell what you know. If there's any, you can start with that. If you've ever been helped, if you've ever been delivered, if you've ever been comforted, if the Lord just never helped you through anything, what do you have in your house? Do you have anything we can work with today? Do you have any starting place for a new season of God in your life? Do you have any starting place for a new miracle in your life? I'm telling you, God will take what you have, no matter how small it looks, no matter how insignificant it looks, she started pouring her one little uh, uh, her one little vessel of oil and it didn't look like much but it just didn't pour out it just kept flowing and flowing and flowing he said we're going to start with what you have and God's going to multiply it can I prophesy over you right now God will take your little money and multiply it God can take your little knowledge and multiply it God can take your little strength and multiply it God can take your little faith and multiply it he'll take your worship and multiply I feel the prophetic word of multiplication in this house today. This church is going to grow. It's going to be like that oil. It won't be long. You'll be gathering up vessels from everywhere. They'll be coming in into that new sanctuary over there. Vessels coming of every size, shape, and color. Amen. Into the house of the Lord. Coming to be filled. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. She had a pot of oil. Now, I like the King James English. The King James English says, I have nothing in my house save a pot of oil. That's the language. I have nothing save a pot of oil. A little awkward for us. We just say, I don't have anything in the house except a pot of oil. Or the only thing I have is oil. But that little King James English, I like it because it gives you a chance to do a little play on that. In other words, if you don't have anything else, save the oil. If you lose everything else, save the oil. As long as you have the oil, as long as you have the Spirit of God, you can start with that and rebuild everything else. See, in the Scripture, oil is a symbol or a type, a shadow, a visual demonstration of the Holy Spirit itself. The oil was myrrh and cinnamon and calamus and cassius and these spices that... They were commonly used in medicine and, and incense and perfume. And, and God gave them a unique recipe. And this became the ingredients of what became known as the holy anointing oil. And there was no fragrance like that fragrance. It was unique in its composition and mixture. And that fragrance became associated with the very presence of God. The priest would stand in the doorway of the temple and they would pour, not just like we do today, we just anoint you with a little on your forehead. They would pour that oil on the priest's head, would run down upon him, down on his garments, all the way down to his feet. But the nature of it was that quickly some would evaporate away and only the spices and the fragrance would remain. So when he come walking through the sanctuary, walking through the temple, that sweet fragrance of the anointing oil would fill the whole house. 
And it became, it became symbolic and it became associated with the very presence of God. That's what I like about walking into a church, big or small, of any size across this country. Because it, you, you hear the familiar sounds. Praise the Lord. Good to see you today. Oh, God bless you. Oh, glad you're here. And you see pastor walking around greeting people. Then you see the musicians gather and they begin to sing. And they sing one of these songs. People begin to say, hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. You hear the familiar hand claps and the familiar praises. And we sing the songs that go up as a sweet smelling savor under the Lord. And it's not like this anywhere else. It's, this is a unique place. And this says the presence of the Lord is here. God is with me. Glory and honor are in His presence. Strength and gladness are in His place. Uh, the Bible talks even about the angel of the Lord's presence uh, and how it saved them. Uh, I don't know how you feel about it today but I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the Lord it is here that I find that familiar fragrance and that familiar feel I learned the paths of righteousness in life and in his presence there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore there's nothing like a moment in the presence of almighty God so when we get to clap in our hands and we get to praising the Lord and we get to singing hallelujah and shouting our high praises unto the Lord God and like the brother said we're interactive around here we sing with the singers and preach with the preachers and the amen start going out and that's right preacher preach it to me and faith starts rising in our soul that's the old familiar fragrance to me that's what ministers to my heart so I say to you today repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out and times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord because where the Spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. God's presence will bring freedom. God's presence will bring peace. God's presence will bring joy. God's presence will bring deliverance. God's presence will bring salvation. And I smell the fragrance and I feel the brush of angels' wings. I feel the touch of the Almighty God. God, we're standing on holy ground. I wonder if you'd lend your voice, if you have a little praise, if you have a little faith, lend your voice to this beautiful atmosphere right here, right now. I don't know if you've noticed me. I like to, I like to get the oil bottles out. We'll have them out here in a few minutes in the altar anointing with oil because the oil says it's not really me touching you the oil says i'm just praying the prayer of faith but the oil which is the spirit of god that's what's touching you oh god for someone that needs that touch today that empty vessel that has come to the house of the lord today i pray that you would minister to him lord in this place you may be seated for about five more minutes the prophet said you have some oil we need to get that oil flowing you know what I'm saying to you today? You have some prayer, we need to get that prayer praying. You have some worship, we need to get that going. You have some faith, we need to get that activated. You got some prophecies that have been spoke over your life, we're going to reignite our faith and belief in God to fulfill that prophecy. Maybe it got delayed or it got off course, but now God's going to bring it back on course and we're going to believe that it's going to be fulfilled. Here's what the Lord spoke to me and this is what I'm speaking to you. If there's any emptiness in the house, the Lord said, bring me an empty vessel and I will fill it. You want a word from the Lord today? He's saying bring me empty places and I will fill them up. Bring me your discouragement. Bring me your weakness. Bring me your trouble. Bring me your sorrow. He'll give you beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning. That's what he said in Isaiah. He said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. Bind up the broken hearted liberty to the captives the opening of prison to them that are bound the acceptable year of the Lord and to comfort them that mourn and to point unto them that mourn in Zion listen beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that you might be called the tree of righteousness and you might be called the planting of the Lord what's the Lord saying he's saying shake off those heavy bands shake off those chains bring me 
me your emptiness. Bring me your discouragement. Bring me your broken places. Bring me your hurting places. Bring me anything. Give me an empty heart. I'll fill it up. Give me an empty life. I'll fill it up. Give me empty hope. Give me empty bank account. Give me empty relationship. Give me empty faith. And I will fill it up to the point that it is overflowing like a well of water springing up under everlasting life. Somebody came empty, going to leave full, full of the power of the Holy Ghost. As long as there's an empty vessel, the Spirit will flow. Let our musicians come and start getting in place today. As long as there's an empty place in a heart, as long as there's a broken place, if there's any hurt, if there's any pain, sorrow, grief, or sadness, bring me a vessel, saith the Lord. Watch what I can do with all of that. If there's any discouragement, if there's any hopelessness, if there's any despair, bring me a vessel and I will fill it. If there's any fear, any torment, trouble of life, look like the devil just trespassing all over you and your house, and tormenting your mind or your emotions or your family. Come on, bring it to the Lord. He said, if you'll just give me a vessel, I don't care how empty it is. I don't care what condition it's in. I will minister to it. If there's any loneliness in your heart, any rejection in your life, come bring that vessel to the Lord. He'll fill it. Whoever's going to help with the music here today can come and help me out. Okay, thank you, brother. Life may be demanding more of you than you have to give. Life may be saying it's time to pay your debt. You seem you owe a debt you cannot pay. You need faith you do not have. You need power you don't seem to possess. You need to pray prayers you don't know how to pray. You need to believe things you don't know what to believe. It's just all emptiness. And sin comes calling. Works of the flesh come calling. But the Lord's calling today. Would you stand with me across this house? He's saying if you have any empty place anywhere and you just have a little faith or a little prayer or a little worship, I'll take that little that you have if you give it to me. And I'll multiply it. I don't know who I'm preaching to. I feel a number of souls. I can feel it back and forth across this church house this morning. Maybe you're not living the kind of life that you're proud of or want to live. But you believe in God and you love the Lord. Maybe you're not as strong as you'd like to be. Maybe your faith is wavered. Maybe you've not been the kind of witness you want to be. But you'd love God with all your heart. I'm opening up this altar today for some empty vessels that will come. Lift your hands to the Lord and trust. If you've got some addictions that are creating emptiness, if your temper gets in your way and it seems like you can't repair things you've damaged, if you have relationships that have been destroyed and you don't know how to repair them, the Lord said, come on, bring all that to me. Bring it to me. I'll give you beauty for your ashes. I'll give you beauty for all that mess and all that destruction. You got something you want to bring to the Lord today? Come bring an empty heart, an empty mind, an empty soul. Lift your hand to the Lord and call out, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need you. I need you, Lord God Almighty. I need the touch of God in my life. Ministers of the church, solid saints, men and women of faith, slip in around this altar. Slip up around somebody. Put a hand on their shoulder and begin to pray for them. Slip an encouraging hand on somebody's back and begin to pray over them. God's about to do something wonderful for someone. Jesus, I pray over everyone that is gathered together in this altar right here. God, I'm praying right now for every heart that's lifting their soul to you right now. I believe if you'd lift those hands up to the Lord with your eyes closed and begin to call his name, Jesus, Jesus, can you hear me as I pray? Jesus, can you hear me as I call out to you right now? I think it's going to be coming down, 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 coming down, down, down. I feel the glory and the help of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Lord, take despair out of her spirit. Trade that despair, Lord, for the inflowing of your destiny in her life, the plan of God being fulfilled in her life. Come on, lay your burdens on the altar. Lay all that despair down. Lay it all down. Lay it all here. That's right. Let them tears flow. Let that heart melt. 
Somebody's already being ministered to, already being blessed, already feeling the touch of God. Oh, God, you're doing the work here right now. We've made a lot of mistakes, Lord. We haven't always got it right. But we've got our faith today, Lord. We're still believing with a stubborn faith. We believe in you, oh God. And I tell you, your stubborn faith is going to bring you through the storm. It's doing the work. It's taking place. I prophesy over you, you're stronger than you think you are. You're doing better than you think you're doing. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right, brother. You know how to pray. You know how to call his name. You're a man of faith. Use that faith in God today. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that is within me. I will bless his holy name. I will praise your holy name. I will praise the name of the Lord. Oh, it's so wonderful. I see you. I'm busy. Give me a second. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I see it. I see the wonderful tears. I see the wonderful prayers. Lord Jesus, you're doing a work across this place right now, Lord, from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. I ask you, Lord, that you would let ministering angels not only be around her right now, not only here at the church, but, Lord, when she leaves this place today, the Spirit is here to comfort you. He's here to comfort you right now. Be miraculously, supernaturally comforted by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost and fire down in your soul. There's something powerful coming from the Lord into your spirit right now. You didn't come with it, but you're going to leave with it. The Lord's going to touch you. It's happening. My brother, I pray over you, Lord, from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Lord, strengthen his faith. Strengthen his passion. In the name of the Lord. I see people calling out to God all over this altar, left and right. People are calling out to the Lord, lifting up their faith in God. In the name of Jesus. I call upon you, O oh Lord. I call upon you, O oh Lord. Jesus, I stand before the throne of grace, making my petition known. Come on, you're going to feel the power of the Lord. You may begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives you utterance. Lord, reward the faithfulness. Reward the labor. Reward the labor of God. Lord and Lord. Blessed, pressed down, shaken together and running over. I speak multiplication over them today. In the name of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. I bless you. The blessing of the Lord will come upon you. Something good is about to happen. I speak it into their future. Over their family. Lord, turn it around. Let there come a turnaround in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray over this sincere prayer that's being prayed right now. Over this prayer of faith that's being prayed, pouring out of her heart and sincerity to you, O oh God. I ask you, Lord, that you would do the work in her right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let her feel the good presence of the Lord. God, I bless this brother. I ask you to increase his faith and open his heart and spirit, Lord, to the flowing of your power in his life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever there's an empty vessel. Touch these young people, Lord. Let them make wise decisions. Let discerning of the Spirit be strong in her, Lord. She can make wise decisions in life. Protect her, keep her, cover her. Go ahead, pour your heart out to the Lord. Pour your spirit out before the Lord. You're poured out, the Lord will pour it in in the mighty name of Jesus. It's happening all over this altar. Lord, from the heavens let it rain down upon her today God the sincerity of her prayer the sincerity of her heart you can feel it Lord you can feel it when she prays how she loves you and how sincere she is before you you're going to do a mighty work in her life in the name of Jesus Lord my brother today using beyond his own expectations God's plans for your life are bigger than your plans God's ready to do more with you and through you than you have thought about yet Use him in evangelism. 
Use him in soul winning. Let him be an influencer, God. Lord, use him, God, to be very aggressive and very bold, Lord. Let it be a holy boldness that would come from the Spirit upon him, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray that you would do a mighty work. That you would comfort him, Lord. Replace any fear with faith, any hesitation, Lord. Lord, with strong passion. Lord God, I'm asking you today, let the anointing that is upon his life, the anointing that is upon his faithfulness, Lord, let it destroy any yoke, any hindrance, any holdback. I plead the blood of Jesus. I declare every chain broken, every yoke destroyed. In the name of the Lord, let him put on that garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. In the mighty name of Jesus, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Lord, bless this brother, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, he's got to come out from among them and be separate. Too many voices. So many voices, so many distractions, so much pulling on him. Let him be, Lord, like the sheep that know the shepherd's voice. He will not listen to any other but the shepherd, to the voice of the Lord speaking. I give you ears to hear and eyes to see and a heart to understand what the Spirit is saying in your life today. You know how to pray in the Holy Ghost now would be a good time. You know how to pray in the Spirit now would be a good time. The Lord is filling up empty places. Ministering angels are here. The Spirit of the Lord is here to minister to the hurts, the wounds, the discouragements in your life. Lord, I pray the prayer of faith over this wonderful lady today. I ask you to touch her, Lord. I ask you, Lord, that you would lead and guide her, direct her steps. I release the spirit of truth into her mind and into her heart. Let it be a light shining that would make the way through all the darkness and the distractions and the evil voices of this world. And Lord, let her see you and feel you. Let her see you like she's never seen you and feel you like she's never felt you. Lord, let the next few weeks of her life be a spiritual discovery, Lord, and a spiritual journey. God, others have used her. Others, Lord, have abandoned her. Others, Lord, have manipulated her. But you won't do it, Lord. You won't do it. Oh, he loves you. He'll help you. He'll lift you. He'll take what little you have and multiply it into something beautiful, something good, something holy. The holiness of the Lord shall fall upon you. The holiness of the Lord, the purity of the Lord shall fall upon you. You will find his favor. You will find his grace. You will be a witness of his tender mercy. You'll be a witness of his great love. No, oh, call out to him. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Spirit. Folks, folks are getting breakthroughs all over this altar. All over this altar, the breakthroughs are flowing right now.
before we close today, I'd like to invite everybody that's willing to participate, if you just press in here close to the altar. I don't know if you picked up from me. I'm not here to embarrass anybody or call anybody out. I don't do those kind of things. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'd just like to gather everybody that can and was willing to to come toward the front. Let's get together and get close. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray for each other, pray for the church. We're going to pray for our lives. But I think we'll feel something powerful. We all get a little closer and we get near each other, get in this altar, and we pray together for just a few minutes. I won't labor it on a long time, but we're going to pray a powerful prayer together. Amen. If she's out, she can stay on the floor. If she's ready to get up, y'all can lift her up. Amen. Amen. Ain't no rules around here. We're just letting God be God. Hallelujah. Amen. Come in close. And then you come in close. I wonder if you close your eyes and lift your voice. If you want to reach over and touch a person on the shoulder, if you're with your husband or wife, you want to hold their hand, that's fine. Or touch a brother on the shoulder, a sister. And let's pray together right now. Lift your voice. Every voice. This is going to be a powerful corporate prayer. Lord, we're praying right now for the strength of the body. Those that need a healing touch, we release the gifts of healing in this prayer right here. We release the power of miracles in this prayer right here. By the authority of the Word of God and by the power of the name Jesus, I speak the word of faith into this assembly and into this body of Christ. And Lord, for this city, let your hand be mightily upon them, O God, I pray. I ask you, Lord, that you would minister to everyone here in emotion and in mental those that are having mental battles and torments in the name of the lord and the strength of this corporate prayer i speak peace to your mind and joy to your emotion if you never received the baptism of the holy ghost just up in here right now why don't you just begin to speak in other tongues as the spirit of god gives you the utterance loose your tongue and let the spirit speak through you right now God's filling up the empty vessels. God's filling up the empty vessels. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for the touch of God. Thank you for the blessings of God. He'll always know where you are. He'll always find you. You're never forsaken, never forgotten, never overlooked. He always knows where you are. His eye is upon you. If his eye is on the sparrow, we know he watches over me. Let that be your theme. If his eye is on the sparrow, I know he watches over me. In the name of Jesus. Sorry, sis. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to speak a word over your pastor and his wife here. and We're going to all pray over them and bless them. The strongest gifting that I feel when I'm around the two of you, and it's a unique gifting because you both, you both seem to have it as the strongest one. Normally there's a strong gift in the husband and a different strong gift in the wife. But I feel the same strong gift in you both, and it's the gift of faith. It's when God causes you to believe. And it doesn't make sense to anybody else. And a lot of times it doesn't even make sense to you. But you just know that you know that you know. And it's almost a stubborn kind of faith. It's an unexplainable kind of faith. Sounds like I'm getting, did some directs, getting some direct hits here. It seemed like the strongest witness, though, was on that word stubborn. I think, I think we might have found something here. Hallelujah. But, you know, God can use that when we give it to him. God can use that. And so the gift of faith is going to be the strongest operation. The gift of faith always gives way to healings and miracles and powerful deliverances. You're going to believe God for this people. You're going to believe God for this church. You're going to believe God for this community. You're going to believe that God is going to lift up people that look the most unlikely to be lifted up. But you're going to see them. They see themselves as a throwaway and a castaway. But you're going to see them as a Sunday school teacher or an usher or a greeter, a soul winner, a Bible study teacher. Church, would you lift your hands toward your pastor and his wife? I want to lay hands on them. I want to anoint them with oil. And if you'd come help me pray, we're going to anoint them, bless them for the future of this church, for the building program. I walked through your new building over there yesterday, did the tour. It's going to be amazing, folks. Let's pray right now. With fresh anointing oil, I lay my hands upon you as an apostolic covering. 
I speak the word of faith by the authority of the word of God and by the power of the name Jesus. I loose you to operate the gift of faith, to prophesy, to speak with words of prophecy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're blessed. You're well equipped. The Lord is working for you and the Lord is working with you in the mighty name of Jesus with a fresh anointing on the pastor's wife. Let her be strong and very courageous, operating in the gift of faith, believing everyone, for everyone, believing that God's going to do a work in every situation. No failure, no turning back, no retreat in the mighty name of Jesus. Every hand raised toward them right now. Every hand raised toward them. Speak a blessing. Ask God to bless their health or their finance, their family, their future, their wisdom, their passion. Whatever you feel to pray, speak and pray something over them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak it in tongues. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Folks, there's a lot, whole lot more happening around here than what you can be aware of. There's a whole lot taking place. She's had a sur having a surgery. Surgery tomorrow. Let's believe God right here. In the name of Jesus, we speak a miracle. We speak a miracle concerning this physical condition, this infirmity of the flesh. I release a miracle into your body right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless her, Lord. Heal her, Lord. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. Let it be a good report, we pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I love the sound of that. Had two received the Holy Ghost this morning. Isn't that beautiful? Come on, church, let's rejoice. Two brand new souls filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Evidenced by speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. Just like in the book of Acts. If you're new to this church, this is a book of Acts church. Now, you've watched enough videos and stuff I'm going to take for granted that you paid attention to the speaking of the word of faith. Normally in a local church setting, just any given Sunday, I normally do not speak the word of faith because the word of faith is usually for mass, uh, crowds, people you can't get to with the laying on of hands. I could lay hands on everybody here if we needed to. But situations where you can't get to everybody, you speak that word of faith and it performs on its own. But I want to speak to you, Pastor, that the word of faith is born in the gift of faith. So the first thing is you become convinced of it. God just drops it in your heart. And then when you speak it, it's not that you're trying to get it to happen. You're trying to make it. It's, it's, you're just speaking what you become convinced of. And that's what makes it a word of faith. And so you're going to be speaking the word of faith. And the gift of prophecy is going to be a strong expression also of your gift of faith. The gift of faith is when God causes you to believe. Prophecy is when you declare words that are in agreement with God's purpose, what God intends to do. Prophecy is a declaration of divine intention. Uh, let me say this, because this, this church is growing into gifts and things of that nature. Uh, the gift of prophecy that is used in people is always positive. It's comforting, exhortation, uh, and comfort in the Holy Ghost, according to the book of Corinthians. The gift of prophecy does not rebuke the church, does not rebuke leaders, does not reveal people's sins. Now, prophets, uh, if you're in the office of a prophet, the prophet may do that. Of course, the prophet may also get killed. So, you know, there's always that. <laughs> you want to go around revealing everybody's sin and gloom and doom. You know, somebody might decide they wasn't too happy about that. And uh, so uh, don't be afraid of the gift of prophecy. Because it's an encouraging gift. It's an uplifting gift. It'll speak something good and positive. Uh, also, this is something I've learned through the years. The Bible said, let one prophesy, let others judge. And that's not just is it of God or not, but how does it fit? What's the timing? What does this refer to? What's it mean? How does it fit into the puzzle of your whole life? But I personally do not believe in private prophecies. I got a word for you, but don't tell nobody. Uh, 99.99999% of the time, those people are trying to manipulate you. 
draw you into their own little club, you know, get some control over you. Uh, there's no reason in the world why a prophecy can't be made known, uh, why at, at very least tell your pastor, your covering, uh, people in your life you know are spiritual, and let them help you judge or determine or discern how this works, how's it fit. See, this is the safety of the body of Christ. Uh, prophets are no entity under themselves. They have to operate the, the, the spiritual authority of the local pastor in the local church. Pa uh, prophets do not usurp authority. They don't have more authority than a pastor. They don't take authority from a pastor. That all would create division. And so, uh, and then you have apostles, and apostles are the same way. They help open things up, open dimensions and doorways, but they don't come into a local church and usurp authority from the pastor. Apostles and prophets work by invitation. In the Old Testament, they inquired of a prophet. In other words, is there a prophet that we know? I don't want some random stranger coming up to me. I don't even know who they are, where they're from, what their life is, and want to speak to me from the Lord. I got plenty of people that I know pray all the time. God can speak to one of those folks. Amen. Because the Bible says, know those that labor among you. And if I get some unknown person, I have to be immediately skeptical. I don't know what they're all about. And so uh, prophecy is a powerful gift for the church so long as we keep it all uh, in line and in order, decent, so people don't get harmed and hurt. Yes, yes. And this is the last thing I'll say on that because I'm saying this, I think there's going to be a lot more prophecy starting to happen in this church. Uh, but the greater the consequences, the greater the confirmation. In other words, if, 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 uh, if somebody prophesied to me, if you'll fast breakfast in the morning, God's going to bless you throughout the whole week. Okay, I'll give it a try. What do I got to lose? I mean, you know, one breakfast. You know, very small risk there. I'm going to try it and see if it's from God. But if somebody prophesied to me, you need to go to Saudi Arabia and preach the gospel on the street corner and be a missionary for the Lord. I'm not going home packing. I say, okay, God, if this is what you want. I'm going to be looking for some confirmation here from some other voices and Float this around to my spiritual authorities. and Because if I get that wrong, I may not come back. So the greater the consequences, the potential damage or danger, the more confirmation you need to have that this is actually a word from God before you just go do it. If it's a small consequence, give it a try. Nothing, nothing ventured, nothing gained. But if it's a big damage, then make sure you're in agreement with those in spiritual authority in your life. Amen pastor that gift of prophecy is strong in you and it's going to bleed through your preaching uh, you don't have to say i'm prophesying you'll just be preaching it'll become prophecy i've heard prophecy in the prayer meetings around here amen but uh, just remember uh, the gift of prophecy is powerful and it's uh, it's elevating it's encouraging it's not gonna it's not gonna rebuke people prophets might but the prof the gift of prophecy won't and even the prophet should be in agreement and working with the other fivefold ministry. They're not a standalone to themselves. The last one is the spirit of prophecy. And the spirit of prophecy, everybody can be a part of. There's going to be very few prophets. There's going to be a few more involved in the gift of prophecy. But everybody can flow in the spirit of prophecy. And what that is, is not when you speak in agreement with God's purpose, but when you act in agreement with God's purpose. You just do something, not really knowing why, just being led of the spirit and you just end up in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. And you didn't even understand how it happened. God just led you here somehow. Looks like magic, but you've just been led of the spirit. And that's the spirit of prophecy. And what makes that stronger in your life, because we've all had them situations where we felt like God uh, led us to do something. We didn't do it because we wasn't sure if it was us or God or what. And then later we said, I wish I would have done that. The Lord was trying to speak to me. What makes it stronger so that you can't resist it is the more you pray. Come to these prayer meetings, you learn to pray, you pray in tongues, you pray in the spirit, pray with understanding. You pray, the more you pray, the stronger the spirit of prophecy gets till the, the influence is pushing you even stronger and you just find yourself more often doing what God's trying to lead you to do. You don't miss it as much. So prayer facilitates all this. We love you. Thank God for you. Thank you for buying all of our oils and fragrances out there. I don't know if you want them, but you're buying them. So thank the Lord. And we appreciate your kindness in that. And pastor, thank you for letting us come. And uh, one day, whenever the Lord has it, we'll come back again. Amen. Let's give pastor a hand of appreciation. Let him know how much you love him as he comes. Thank you, Brother Clindance. Let's give the Lord praise right now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
Amen. I'm just going to close with a couple of words right here, if you'll just listen to me for just a second. Number one, uh, we've learned so much this week through the testimonies and all that stuff. And one of the great things, not only have we learned so much, I think, and some of you are looking at me, I, I've counted probably about eight things that he has confirmed that we teach. Yes, absolutely. And, man, confirmation is good, yes, is good. Because it, sometimes you hear me say it and you go, he's crazy. Doug Kleinitz gets up here and goes, maybe he ain't so crazy. You know? <laughs> so that's good stuff. I will say this. They've got a lot of oils and stuff out there. Listen, they've got oils that will make angels appear. <laughs> you can spray them in a parking spot and a new car will show up. <laughs> Healing virtue taking place. I mean, I'm just playing. But, uh, I pray it all happens. Yeah. <laughs> But I will say this, there's a story in the Bible where this woman says, you know, we're going to build a little spot in our house, we're going to take some of this for the man of God, and we're going to make a place for them, and we're going to make sure he has what he needs, when he needs it, stuff like that. I don't know about all the angels and all that stuff, but I've learned this, if you take care of the man of God and the prophet of God, God will make sure that he can do that. And you may not know what else you can do, go buy some oils, all right? We love you, God bless you. Do I have somebody supposed to be dismissing service? That's you? Get on up here and do it then. Now listen, you're my son-in-law. Don't screw this up. It'd make me look bad too, all right? God no bless pressure, you. No pressure, right? Thank you, God, for this word that we've received today, Lord. And let us go back to our homes, even to our work and our families, extended families, to our friends, God, and help us to find those vessels that are empty. Help us to bring those vessels to you, God, to let you fill it and be a part of our lives, God, greater than we could ever hope for. In Jesus' name.